Well, here's my take on the third and final presidential debate, the one on foreign policy. I have five things to say about it. Hi, I'm Mikola, and I'm wearing this shirt so you know I'm not neutral on this. Okay, five things. Fair or not, it's probably not, body language trumps verbal language. As with music, words are the last thing an audience tunes into. And in the third debate on body language, those unspoken cues of poise, confidence, or discomfort, President Obama took it. Clear winner of the war of affect, assured, focused, no ums. Mitt Romney looked uncomfortable, like he had indigestion. He was sweating through his makeup, a classic case of what comedians and actors call flop sweat. That nervous reaction you have when you know you're bombing. Does it matter? Yes. Romney looked like he knew that we knew that he was skating by on very shallow preparation. He had some key words to throw out as often as possible. Unraveling, tumult, but no depth. And a huge howler about Iran using Syria as a bridge to the sea. Memo to Mitt? Look at a map. As in the first debate, the Mitt Romney who showed up to debate President Obama wasn't the same guy who campaigned to win the Republican nomination. To get nominated, Romney had posed as a severely conservative, tough, 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 tough guy. To get elected, he simply waltzed away from positions he held just a few weeks ago. Now, why this should have surprised anyone is a little mysterious, because Romney's advisor, Eric Fernstrom, gave away the game plan back in March. Fernstrom said, I think you hit a reset button for the fall campaign. It's almost like an etch-a-sketch. Liberals mocked him for that. It sounded so cynical. Nobody took it seriously. Until the first debate. Even so, I was surprised to see Governor Romney endorsing President Obama's policies in case after case. Afghanistan withdrawal in 2014, yes. No military in intervention in Syria, yes. Peaceful pressure on Iran, yes. Force out Mubarak in Egypt, yes. He didn't even circle back to attack the president on handling the Benghazi raid, where an American ambassador and three others died. Trouble is that in suddenly sounding reasonable, Romney reinforces the creepiest thing about him. He has no core, no beliefs, no commitments to anything but his own ambition. He will say whatever he calculates an audience wants to hear. It's a very cynical ploy. Assume your audience has no memory of ever having seen you before. Men will admit this is not extreme makeover. It's a campaign to be president of the United States. Don't voters deserve a clue about which version of you will show up if you get elected? Now, unlike the first debate, this time Obama was ready for the shape-shifting. Where in the first debate, he seemed stunned that the Mitt Romney of the spring didn't show up in the fall. This time he had a game plan for multiple Mitt. He had zingers for Romney's known positions. When Romney complained again that our Navy has fewer ships than in 1916, the president reminded him that we also have fewer horses and bayonets. When Romney danced away from his warmongering neocon positions, Obama reminded him how recently he had held them. And when Romney embraced Obama's policies, the president was ready with this gem. There have been times, Governor, frankly, during the course of this campaign, where it sounded like you thought you'd do the same things we did. But you'd say them louder. And somehow that would make a difference. Instapolls all gave it to Obama by a wide margin. Obama supporters, like me, gave it to Obama by a wide margin. But the Romney camp and a surprising number of the media saw it differently. Just by showing up, they said, and saying reasonable things, Romney proved he was presidential and commandery. Really? Talk about grading on a curve. But almost all of the reasonable answers that Mitt Romney had were cribbed from Obama's paper. So if Romney becomes president, who's he going to copy from? It's not clear whether Romney will pay any penalty with the voters for treating truth so cynically. Although Team Obama won three out of the four debates, it was the first one, the one that Romney walked away with, that so far has had the most impact. That one moved the polls substantially. This one, maybe a little. Nevertheless, the analyst I trust most on these things, Nate Silver, believes that overall the odds still favor Obama winning a second term. I'll explain why in a future video. This was a mild bit of theater for voters, part of our election ritual, but it wasn't much of a debate on U.S. foreign policy. Just two guys in a Venn diagram with a huge bit of overlap. Whole topics were missing in action. What about Latin America and drug trafficking? What about Eurozone and economic recovery? What about the Palestinians? What about Cuba? What about kill lists and drones? There was no voice on stage to challenge basic assumptions of U.S. policy. Perhaps this wasn't the time or the place. Perhaps Americans had no taste for that. But imagine a foreign policy debate with Ron Paul on stage with Romney and Obama. Now that would have been worth watching. Until next time, I'm Nicola. This playlist will get you back to all my debate videos. 
And here's a placeholder for my next political piece, A Guide to the U.S. Election for Brits. And here's a video I did two years ago, A Guide to the U.K. Election for Americans. End screens. It's the new black.